purpose of this NAT1780 screencast is to describe the formation of the ozone layer back from the earliest days in the histories of our planet and also to talk about the evolution of the temperature profile for our planet which uh, had a lot uh, in common, a lot of shared history if you like, with the uh, formation of the uh, of the ozone layer. So we'll start off by uh, taking you back to the Hadean Eon, that uh, period in Earth's history that um, starts around 3.8 billion years ago and uh, goes right back to the uh, the earliest days uh, in the formation of the planet around, at around uh, 4.6 billion years ago, um, a time when uh, the uh, the planet was uh, very active from a, uh, a volcanic perspective, and as a result, we uh, will try and illustrate here a, a very simple artist's uh, depiction of a, a volcano that's. Uh, um, introducing into the atmosphere, injecting into the atmosphere, if you like, uh, various kinds of uh, volcanic materials, uh, including ash, including various gases, as we've uh, discussed uh, in other components of the, uh, of the course. Um, there is, during this, uh, this time frame in the, uh, the Hadean Eon, so we'll just write that down here as well, uh, there is no atmosphere to speak of, and as a result, uh, radiation that's uh, incident on the planet from the sun and we'll try and uh, introduce an artist's depiction of the uh, the sun here uh, not a particularly good uh, depiction I'm sure we can do a little bit better than that let's try uh, so here we have the uh, the sun uh, obviously not the scale <laughs> um, quite distant from the planet and uh, uh, you know uh, Basically, directing ultraviolet radiation towards the uh, the surface of the planet. In addition to other, in addition to radiation in uh, other parts of the electromagnetic spectrum, but the ultraviolet's the uh, the critical one for our discussion here. So initially, back in this uh, Hadean time frame, there is no atmosphere to speak of, and as a consequence, the ultraviolet radiation incident upon the surface of the planet makes its way all the way down to the uh, the surface of the planet and this is why we've talked about uh, uh, life in the uh, very simple life forms in the oceans as being the uh, the initial uh, likely uh, place where uh, life started on the planet so back in this particular time frame um, if you were to construct a temperature profile for the planet so we'll use this as uh, the sort of base level from an altitude perspective and we'll uh, we'll chart off uh, altitude here in the uh, in the vertical sense and again I think we can probably produce a slightly better line than that let's try that again so we'll have um, altitude okay didn't do a very good job there either you can tell I'm uh, kind of new to this particular tool uh, this uh, way of uh, producing screencasts. So anyway, we'll try and do that again. That's a little bit better. So we'll have um, altitude uh, being um, indicated here in the uh, in the vertical sense. <clears throat> try and spell it a little bit more uh, accurately. So ALT for altitude being marked off in the vertical and then temperature in um, Actually, it would be more uh, customary from a science perspective to record uh, temperature in units of Kelvin on the uh, on the horizontal axis, uh, even though we haven't really spoken at uh, any great length as to what Kelvins are, but uh, temperature increasing from left to right in the uh, the horizontal sense. So um, given this very simple uh, kind of view, we've got a, a hot planet that is uh, literally um, you know, material is emerging from the inside of the planet. We have incident radiation that can be uh, potentially absorbed and uh, re-emitted in the infrared part of the electromagnetic spectrum as well uh, on this uh, planet. And as a result, uh, probably the temperature profile for um, a scenario like this would be one uh, where uh, we have essentially a single layer of the atmosphere in which 
uh, temperature decreases with height and so maybe we'll just uh, make a note of that here so temperature decreases with height or altitude whatever you want to uh, call it there so that's what this particular uh, sloped uh, line is showing in this uh, representation the temperature uh, decrease with height so when upwards to the left slope is indicating a decrease with height and uh, so this um, we have a, as I say a single basically a single atmospheric layer because in the case of Earth's atmosphere we actually define the vertical structure of Earth's atmosphere on the basis of temperature changes and uh, in this case we really don't have a change we just have a steady a systematic decrease of uh, temperature with height so what I'd like to do now is actually introduce the earliest appearance of an ozone layer. So we figure that the first appearance of an ozone layer uh, must have happened uh, sometime uh, after the end of the uh, Hadean era, uh, Hadean eon, uh, the, the, uh, the planet has uh, started to cool down. And just for simplicity, I'll um, actually I'll redraw this. Uh, with um, without a uh, without a volcanic structure, so I've redrawn the uh, the surface of the planet at uh, some time in the uh, after the end of the Hadean period. Planets has uh, started to cool down. Uh, we have uh, abundant uh, oceans. We have uh, photosynthesis being carried out by anaerobic organisms in the ocean and uh, the percolation of uh, oxygen from the uh, oceans on out uh, from the oceans into uh, the atmosphere and this the the presence of oxygen in earth's early atmosphere is actually a precondition for the production of ozone because as we discussed uh, in um, in the in other parts of the course uh, you actually uh, oxygen is required uh, as uh, as an ingredient if you like uh, as a reactant that uh, participates in a chemical reaction uh, where uh, known as a uh, photolysis where the uh, oxygen molecular oxygen O2 gets broken apart into uh, atomic oxygen and then atomic oxygen can combine with another molecular oxygen to produce uh, the ozone uh, molecules so basically oxygen O2 uh, results in the production of ozone O3 so this is the um, the post Hadean time frame uh, we'll uh, label this as sometime in the Archean Eon and possibly uh, continuing on into the uh, Proterozoic Eon uh, as well. So um, basically, uh, sometime after about 3.8 billion years ago to um, probably about uh, 600 million uh, years uh, before the present time. So um, basically, during this time frame, uh, it's uh, theorized that uh, an ozone layer was uh, first developed and we think that it probably was developed uh, actually um, quite close to the uh, the surface of the planet so I'll just um, do a, use a little bit of uh, shading here actually I don't want to use yellow I want to use a different color and so uh, this some um, kind of bluish shading here is supposed to depict the uh, initial formation of the ozone layer all right very close to the uh, to the surface so what does this actually do to the temperature profile uh, for the uh, for the planet that's one of the uh, the very interesting uh, consequences of uh, starting to produce ozone so over here on the right I'm going to redraw our uh, diagram uh, that allows us to uh, depict temperature profiles we'll try and uh, draw it with a slightly more uh, steady hand a little bit better uh, that's still not very good um, <laughs> clearly some uh, dexterity lessons are uh, required all right it's a little better it'll it'll have to do uh, so we have temperature again in um, in Kelvin on the uh, the horizontal axis here 
that's a little bit better increasing from left to right and again uh, altitude uh, increasing vertically here. So what we had in the Hadean time period was a temperature profile where temperature decreased in a very very systematic way uh, with height. And uh, what's interesting now about the introduction of ozone is that the the production reactions for ozone as you may uh, recall from uh, some of our uh, discussions during the lectures and so on the productions react the production reactions for uh, for ozone are such that they actually release heat they're what are called exothermic chemical reactions so they actually release heat energy as uh, the reactions take place so uh, we actually believe that this kind of uh, reaction has the effect of warming up the um, uh, the planet. So probably uh, the production of ozone in the earliest phases shown here as being close to the surface uh, resulted in um, slightly warmer uh, temperature profile. So you can see here uh, what I've drawn in, um, in blue is this um, just shown here is this uh, very um, small little kink in the uh, the temperature profile that um, is uh, trying to indicate to you a slight warming I'm going to draw it again uh, a slight warming in the uh, the temperature profile uh, with height so we have um, in this new area where ozone is being produced we have a small region where there's a slope that is slightly upwards and to the right and uh, this is a region where temperature increases with height. Now, uh, what we also believe happened uh, basically during this uh, same time period, and again, of course, the timing on this is is all speculative because um, it's not as if anybody was around to uh, actually uh, chart any of this. But um, we actually think that uh, during this um, this same period that uh, the ozone layer continued. To, uh, to develop and that's what I'm going to try and illustrate here I just have to reconstruct our diagram here so again we've got our reference uh, temperature profile uh, temperature decreasing with height and what I want to do now is um, illustrate a, uh, a growing ozone layer and so uh, we'll go ahead and do that again showing it in bloom we'll just assume that the ozone layer continued to grow going to make it quite a bit bigger now just to help um, really exaggerate um, this for the purpose of the uh, of the diagram so this whole region here now is our um, growing uh, ozone layer and uh, let me go ahead and just um, label it as such so this is our ozone layer again it's it's thickening and it's still close to the surface all right so the impact of um, this particular layer uh, again gets felt so I'm going to kind of trace the top of this um, layer so now we actually have notice that we have actually a, um, a two-layer atmosphere um, uh, some kind of a layer that's uh, got um, you know a fairly ozone rich layer and then above it a layer that uh, is some um, is evolving in terms of the other gases that we've uh, we've talked about as well. So this presence of the ozone layer and the fact that there are exothermic chemical reactions uh, taking place here again result in uh, a temperature profile that gets uh, somewhat modified during this particular time frame in uh, the evolution, the early evolution, if you like, of the uh, of the planet. Okay, um, and then uh, basically uh, moving forward from here, and again, uh, really the uh, the time frames are a little bit um, hard to establish here. But then uh, beyond this time, we have further development of the ozone layer, and I'll show you that on another uh, cartoon in just a moment. Just before I get to that, let me go back to the previous slide and uh, just remind you of uh, what was going on in the Hadean period. We have the sun producing ultra, uh, producing radiation in all, uh, basically all components of the electromagnetic spectrum. We focused in on ultraviolet radiation because that's a, a critically important one. Um, now, as we move into the uh, Archean and uh, Proterozoic uh, time period, we still have the sun. Um, producing uh, radiation 
and so we'll in reintroduce the sun here and then we'll also um, illustrate the radiation ultraviolet radiation and here the key thing is that the ozone layer serves actually to block the uh, the radiation that back in this um, previous diagram uh, this ultraviolet radiation would have traveled and penetrated right down to the uh, the surface of the planet the creation of the ozone layer uh, ozone has the capacity to absorb ultraviolet radiation one might say with uh, extreme prejudice so this um, this ozone layer that started to develop here close to the surface uh, also serves as a um, uh, you can think of it as almost being like a barrier to ultraviolet radiation. It does not allow ultraviolet radiation to penetrate all the way to the, the surface of the planet. So this is, of course, extremely important in uh, the, um, the, the, the evolution of life on the surface of the planet because prior to the existence of this, uh, this ozone layer, Basically, uh, all life has been limited to uh, existing within the hydrosphere component of the, uh, the early Earth. And so we believe that the creation of this ozone layer uh, somewhere around this Archean Proterozoic uh, time frame is um, absolutely crucial to uh, the, uh, the, the ability for, uh, for life to actually make its way out onto the, uh, the surface of the planet. In this particular part of the screencast, I want to pick up the uh, the whole discussion on the formation of the ozone layer, uh, basically at some time frame that's probably around uh, 600 or so uh, million years to the uh, basically the uh, the present time. So uh, let me just go ahead and indicate that. So sort of less than uh, or equal to approximately 600 million years. So basically from the um, the late Proterozoic to uh, you know more or less the, the uh, geologically speaking uh, relatively recent times. So um, in this particular uh, diagram again we have the uh, the surface of the planet and um, let me also indicate uh, as I've done before uh, the presence of the ozone layer and the curious thing about the ozone layer is now that it's actually displaced um, quite substantially from the uh, the surface of the planet uh, in fact um, we'll, we'll, we'll be a little bit more precise but at some point that ozone layer that uh, initially formed uh, close to the the surface of the planet and then gradually thickened as more and more oxygen became available uh, as a result of uh, photosynthesis initially within the oceans and then ultimately uh, for life on land that ozone layer uh, continued to thicken and at some point uh, although the mechanism is not particularly uh, clear that uh, that ozone layer actually uh, moved from being uh, close to the uh, the surface uh, to um, in fact uh, being uh, much uh, farther away from the surface so again we'll just depict the uh, the ozone layer, uh, the sun, um, the uh, plentiful uh, ultraviolet radiation incident upon uh, this ozone layer, which has, uh, as I say, has thickened, and uh, now is at an altitude of um, about uh, 25, whoops, uh, 25 kilometers or so. Uh, in terms of uh, where it is in terms of altitude of uh, Earth's atmosphere. So um, basically more or less at its uh, present day location. And again, because ozone has the capacity to absorb uh, particularly effectively radiation in the ultraviolet part of the spectrum, uh, what that means is that uh, this radiation gets absorbed in this particular layer uh, within the planet and uh, does not make its way all the way down to the surface. And as a consequence, uh, as we get into this um, late uh, Proterozoic time frame um, and uh, kind of getting closer and closer uh, to the present, we have a, um, a very uh, capable, uh, a very hospitable environment, if you like, 
for the uh, development of, uh, of uh, foliage and so the flora and the fauna is able to uh, to be introduced in this particular time frame with uh, a very nice uh, ozone layer that's uh, providing ample protection so again let's draw the temperature profile temperature being uh, accounted for in Kelvin which is the common thing to do uh, and uh, altitude uh, we can actually, uh, in fact, uh, this time we can we can actually indicate a scale for altitude as we're going to have a couple of uh, indications here of altitude. So we'll use uh, altitude in kilometers, increasing from uh, bottom to top and uh, showing that here. And in fact, I think what we'll also do is maybe we'll even extend the, uh, the axis here uh, for altitude up a little bit higher on the uh, in the vertical sense and because uh, that will also serve some of our purposes as we talk about what's happened uh, in terms of the development of a, a layered atmospheric structure. So um, basically if we now again let's trace across uh, the kind of the thickness of this uh, this ozone layer and what I'm trying to show here now is essentially that the uh, is that ozone reaches its um, maximum levels of concentration at an altitude of about uh, 25 kilometers which of course we understand today to be the uh, the present day um, uh, stratosphere of the planet and in fact what we see in um, this particular case is that uh, in this particular region of uh, of the planet the so-called uh, stratosphere we have uh, temperature uh, increasing with height and uh, try and draw that a little bit better so basically a slope of upwards to the right is an indication of temperature increasing with height and uh, again it's these uh, these the, the chemical reactions involving ozone that are uh, responsible for uh, for this now uh, below the um, uh, below the stratosphere, uh, the modern day uh, stratosphere, in the uh, the troposphere we still have a case where uh, temperature decreases with height. So the profile looks uh, considerably more uh, like that um, again to uh, to some artist depiction. And then um, in fact as you get above the stratosphere uh, we um, we end up with uh, temperature again uh, decreasing with height. So uh, this middle region here which in the uh, the modern Earth is around um, uh, basically if you look in your uh, your textbook as a reference the stratosphere starts at around uh, 11 kilometers or so and um, ends at uh, about uh, just shy of um, 50 kilometers that's uh, basically the region that we refer to as being the stratosphere let me see if we can just write that in here for you and then uh, down below, this is also definitely uh, not to scale. Uh, down here below, we have uh, this lowest part of the planet closest to the surface that we call the troposphere. And uh, if everything were to scale, uh, basically the, um, the top of the troposphere would be um, around 11 or so kilometers. The top of the stratosphere is more around uh, 49 or so kilometers um, so you can see the stratosphere is quite a thick layer and there's very much there's a transition uh, between uh, these regions so once again in the troposphere uh, basically as you can see here the slope of this uh, temperature versus height profile is such that it slopes upwards and to the left and that means that basically through the entire troposphere on average temperature decreases with height in the stratosphere in contrast to that uh, where we have these production exothermic production reactions involving ozone taking place you can see that we have a region where the slope is upwards and uh, to the right and that is uh, indeed where uh, temperature is um, increasing with height in this region here um, so you can see that uh, to, uh, to be the case Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, sum up what um, we've discussed here. Uh, we started off by talking about 
the Hadean Eon where we have no atmosphere to speak of. Uh, the surface of the planet is very hot. There's a tremendous amount of volcanic activity. There's uh, incident solar radiation that's also contributing probably at this point in Earth's history in a fairly uh, minor way to the, uh, the heat at the surface. Oh, being overwhelmed by the uh, volcanic activity that's uh, uh, making an impression on the surface of the planet. And as a result, we believe that during this uh, Hadean eon, uh, roughly speaking, temperature would be decreasing with altitude, as we're showing in, uh, on the right here in, um, in this particular diagram. If we then go ahead and move forward to uh, somewhere uh, probably starting in the Archean eon and then extending well into the, uh, the, towards the end of the Proterozoic, uh, what we find is that the oxygen that has been produced in oceans by anaerobic organisms that uh, are uh, able to carry out photosynthesis, that oxygen that has in some sense uh, made its way into the, uh, the early atmosphere can then be converted into ozone, uh, in fact involving ultraviolet radiation. And that, uh, that activity, that, those chemical reactions likely started to take place very, very close to the surface of the planet where the oxygen was available and where ultraviolet radiation was able to, uh, to penetrate. And uh, that combination led to the production of an ozone layer. As more, ox as more oxygen was added uh, to the atmosphere uh, during this particular time frame, uh, that ample supply, that increasing supply of oxygen means uh, an increasing supply as well of uh, oxygen to be uh, photolyzed and to be uh, therefore uh, able to uh, to produce ozone. So the ozone layer uh, which continued to likely remain close to the surface of the planet during this time frame also uh, thickened. The uh, um, the effect of uh, those ex the exothermic reactions uh, um, that uh, produce ozone uh, that that heat additional heat generation uh, basically resulted in a modification of the temperature profile that you can see here at the right where as uh, the ozone gets introduced it literally warms uh, the the lower this new lower emerging lower layer uh, of the atmosphere so we have also for the first time a um, a bit of structure uh, to the um, to the atmosphere in terms of a, a temperature profile and then beyond this time frame if we look finally at the uh, the last uh, 600 million years or so at some point that ozone layer continued to develop as again more oxygen became available. Uh, the ozone layer, as you can see here, has the ability to absorb ultraviolet radiation. And through a mechanism that we haven't uh, really got a uh, terrific uh, handle on, uh, that ozone layer also uh, migrated, if you like, from being close to the surface of the planet to uh, more or less its uh, present location up some uh, with the peak in concentration existing around about uh, 25 uh, kilometers in terms of altitude of the planet. The, uh, the ozone layer where it existed uh, at some time in the last 600 million years and uh, basically to, uh, to modern times uh, continues to uh, function in the way that we've been describing. It has the ability to continue to absorb ultraviolet radiation and the that radiation, uh, some of that radiation is involved in splitting apart and dissociating uh, molecular oxygen such that uh, we have atomic oxygen able to combine with uh, molecular oxygen, oxygen and continue to produce ozone that's uh, now become quite localized to this, uh, this region of the atmosphere that we, uh, this layer of the atmosphere that we know today as the as the stratosphere. And that exo, those exothermic reactions involving the production of ozone are what um, are primarily responsible for the fact that uh, in the stratosphere temperature is uh, increasing with height. And that's why the, um, the blue part of the curve that um, I'm showing you here in this particular uh, uh, diagram is uh, in fact um, a region where uh, temperature is increasing with height. And so I'll just um, 
circle that for emphasis for you. So this region here, temperature increasing with height, a slope, a positive slope if you like, a slope of upwards and uh, to the right. That, um, that region there is where uh, we have the production of ozone giving rise to uh, a, slight, uh, a warming effect and as a result completely modifying the uh, the temperature profile so in fact it's uh, it, it's 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 these changes in temperature these uh, these patterns of variations in temperature with altitude that um, that we use as the basis for describing the vertical structure of um, of Earth's atmosphere and that completes our screencast. days uh, in the formation of the planet at around uh, 4.6 billion years ago, um, a time when uh, the, uh, the planet was uh, very active from a, uh, a volcanic perspective. And as a result, we uh, will try and illustrate here a, a very simple artist's uh, depiction of a, a volcano that's uh, um, introducing into the atmosphere, injecting into the atmosphere, if you like, uh, various kinds of uh, volcanic materials, uh, including ash, including various gases, as we've uh, discussed uh, in other components of the, uh, of the course. Um, there is, during this, uh, this time frame in the, uh, the Hadean Eon, so we'll just write that down here as well, uh, there is no atmosphere to speak of, and as a result, uh, radiation that's uh, incident on the planet from the sun and we'll try and uh, introduce an artist's depiction of the uh, the sun here uh, not a particularly good uh, depiction I'm sure we can do a little bit better than that let's try uh, so here we have the uh, the sun uh, obviously not the scale <laughs> um, quite distant from the planet and uh, uh, you know uh, basically directing ultraviolet radiation towards the uh, the surface of the planet in addition to other in addition to radiation in uh, other parts of the electromagnetic spectrum but the ultraviolet's the uh, the critical one for our discussion here so initially back in this uh, Hadean time frame there is no atmosphere to speak of and as a consequence the ultraviolet radiation incident upon the surface of the planet makes its way all the way down to the uh, the surface of the planet and this is why we've talked about uh, uh, life in the uh, very simple life forms in the oceans as being the uh, the initial uh, likely uh, place where uh, life started on the planet so back in this particular time frame um, if you were to construct uh, a temperature profile for the planet so we'll use this as uh, the sort of base level the purpose of this NAT 1780 screencast is to describe the formation of the ozone layer back from the earliest days in the histories of our planet and also to talk about the evolution of the temperature profile for our planet which uh, had a lot uh, in common, a lot of shared history if you like, with the uh, formation of the, uh, of the ozone layer. So we'll start off by uh, taking you back to the Hadean Eon, that uh, period in Earth's history that um, starts around 3.8 billion years ago and uh, goes right back to the, uh, the earliest level from an altitude perspective. And we'll, uh, we'll chart off uh, altitude here in the, uh, in the vertical sense. And again, I think we can probably produce a slightly better line than that. Let's try that again. So we'll have um, altitude. OK, didn't do a very good job there either. You can tell I'm uh, kind of new to this particular tool, uh, this uh, way of uh, producing screencasts. So anyway, we'll try and do that again. That's a little bit better. So we'll have um, altitude uh, being um, indicated here in the, uh, in the vertical sense. <clears throat> Try and spell it a little bit more uh, accurately. 